Other breaking news, the province has reached a tentative deal with elementary education workers. Education Minister Stephen Lecce says the tentative agreement is an important step to ensuring stability for families. The president of ETFO says the deal addresses the bargaining concerns of the union's 3,500 education workers, but notes that there is still no deal yet with 80,000 teachers and occasional teachers. Strike votes for teachers will continue. For more on this, we are joined by the one half of negotiations here, Education Minister Stephen Lecce. Thanks for joining us here uh, live on CB24. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to be back. Absolutely. So 3,500 education workers, uh, they have a deal locked in. How did the negotiations go there? How do we get to this point? You know, from day one, our priority as a government has just been keeping these kids in school. We know nothing matters more than a stable school year that's back to normal with the clubs and sports, extracurriculars, and the back-to-basics focus of the government. So we've been negotiating in good faith. We landed a significant agreement with QP last fall. We just landed a tentative agreement on a framework with OSSCF. That's the public English high school students, and that's before ratification. And now we've landed another tentative agreement with the Elementary Teachers Federation for their education workers. This demonstrates progress, that we can work together to put our kids first, and we're going to continue to be relentless uh, in ensuring we land deals that protect the in-person learning experience for kids. That's the priority of the Premier. It's the priority of this government. And we are determined to do everything possible to get these done, to allow kids to refocus their time on um, really improving their skills and getting back to learning. And so how confident do you feel about uh, signing a deal and getting on the same page with the 80,000 uh, teachers and uh, occasional teachers? You know, look, I think we're moving in the right direction. I appreciate um, that the government has really put out an olive branch of an offer to all deals, to all uh, negotiation uh, tables. That includes EDFO. We want to make the case that if we can land a tentative agreement with one union, with OSSTF, um, that is before ratification, we believe we can do the same for all. You know, as I said just a few weeks ago, think of this. A child that started school last September in grade nine, under this proposal, they're going to graduate high school without any potential threat of a strike or a withdrawal of service. That's a huge achievement. That's an amazing story to tell. These kids deserve it. I want that for every child in elementary school and Catholic school, in our French schools, every child. So I'm cautiously optimistic we can continue to move the yardstick forward. This government has put forth interest arbitration as an option. If we can agree, we have a fair independent system to uh, get to, dis uh, to render an outcome that avoids a strike. And that's my priority. It's a fair offer and I'm urging all the outstanding unions to do the right thing, sign up, sign on, and stay in school so we can allow kids to focus on the back to basics and the foundational skills we're trying to really emphasize in the classroom today. For sure. Now, okay, speaking of staying in school and focusing, uh, it appears a lot of uh, students uh, in, in schools across the GTA, pretty tough to focus right now, particularly uh, out in Vic Park uh, School in the city's east end, reportedly getting uh, surrounded uh, uh, by protesters against gender identity being taught in schools and we have counter protesters there as well. Uh, we're hearing that students are being told not to leave the school as we speak. They don't believe it's safe. Uh, what's your reaction to what is now the second uh, demonstration uh, about this particular issue? Yeah, I mean, look, free speech is critical in Canada. We have to be civil and respectful. You also have to recognize that kids are in schools to learn. And we need to respect that. But at the end of the day, my priority as ministers is to ensure that we build the confidence of parents that we are listening to their priorities. And the number one priority parents are telling me and telling this government is that they want schools to focus on academic achievement. They want their schools to be more focused on reading, writing, and math than STEM education because too many young people are, are graduating without the skills they need to succeed. This is a competitive economy. It's a global competitive economy. We need our young people to graduate with a competitive advantage. That means they need to be very capable in the core competencies, financially literate. They need to be emotionally intelligent. They need to be able to communicate, to debate, uh, and to think critically. And that is our priority, back to basics in Ontario schools. If we can do that, I know we can support our kids and then really unleash the full potential of young people in Ontario. Absolutely, I, I agree. Like right, math and science, reading and writing, those are all very key to succeed. Just the baseline uh, in this world. But you know, there are, there are parents out there, there are supporters of there of, of the you know the pride community who feel that if if school's not even a safe place for for kids to be themselves and to to be their true gender identity and, and feel that way they can come into harm's way. So it, is your government there to, to help them as well have that basic need? Yeah. You know, I think it, it must be said. 
our schools are places for every child to succeed, to be respected, to be affirmed, uh, to recognize the dignity of every child. It doesn't matter where you come from in this province, your faith, your heritage, your gender, your sexual orientation. This is what being proud to be Canadian looks like. It's the idea that we can celebrate our differences and learn from each other. Safety, respect is at the core of a civil society. And we always will stand by the LGBTQ plus community in the defense of their human rights. But we will also make the case that parents must be a part of uh, supporting uh, their children and being involved to ensure their kids are healthy, are safe, uh, and frankly, are on a good path. And we believe in that principle. We believe parents are foundational. They're the center of the education system. And we just passed a bill that actually strengthens the voices of parents. And I want school boards to listen to the voices of parents, to get back to basics and to ensure uh, parents and guardians are better empowered to support their kids. Because if we do this together as a partnership, as they say, it takes a village. If we work together and empower parents to love their kids, I'm absolutely confident we can help ensure these young people graduate, uh, they pursue higher learning, they get a good job, they own a home, they achieve the dream of this country. So I'm not going to give up on that. And we're going to continue to work with all parties to ensure safety, but yes, to ensure parental voices are heard in Ontario schools. All right. So potentially then quickly then to move maybe the demonstration back to Queen's Park, maybe leave the schools alone in this case, let them focus. <laughs> Yeah, certainly, uh, I think uh, we, kids need to be in school to focus, right. and that would be uh, the clear preference of most. I mean, look, uh, yeah. we live in a democracy. We've got to listen to differing voices, even if we disagree with them. Uh, I always believe that for a child, let them be kids. Let them go to school with their friends, with their teachers. Let them learn and let them have their physical mental health uh, protected. Uh, but I do believe there are appropriate places to have these debates and to have these uh, protests. And I think government has to listen has to listen to the people on the ground. And we are, as a government, our premier is, I am, and I know our entire PC caucus is as well. So let's continue to listen to each other, not speaking through each other. Uh, that's the beauty of, of a civil democracy. And I still want to believe we are one in this country. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for chatting with us quickly here. Uh, live on CP24 Education Minister Stephen Lynch. We appreciate it.